Hey, this video talks about swear cameras. Uh, what is a swear camera? And some important information about swear cameras, including applications and pricing. A lot of people want to know what swear cameras are. Well, maybe not a lot of people, but um, here in the scientific and military and industrial community, um, we definitely want to know more about swear cameras because they're very important for a number of applications. So this short video will tell us more. Here's what we're going to talk about. What is a swear camera? The technology behind it. Some key terms. Why use it? Applications. We'll actually show some market pricing um, and the factors that affect price. And we're going to tell you more about ITAR and where you can buy these products. So, what is a swear camera? Swear is an acronym for shortwave infrared. A swear camera is quite simply a camera that operates in the shortwave infrared portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. What that means is a swear camera is operating typically between 1100 and 2500 nanometers. Some of the key terms, and these are basic key terms, there are a lot more having to do with the uh, specifications um, and uh, the, the technology and the applications, but just some basic key terms. Uh, having to do with swear cameras and when you hear the words uh, swear camera. Uh, well, NIR or NIR uh, is near infrared. And sometimes you hear near and swear used interchangeably. Some cameras um, you could consider near and swear cameras and that means they're operating in both the NIR and the swear. And typically those cameras are operating between 900 and 1700 nanometers. Um, whereas a, a, a true swear camera is operating uh, between 1 micron or about 1.1 to 2.5. Um, typical ranges, just for you to understand, is typically the 900 to 1700 nanometer range is the typical range of a swear camera on the market today. Um, so that's why you could still call it a near swear camera and get away with calling it that. Um, in gas is typically the preferred detector material uh, that's used in swear cameras. Um, and uh, there are other options and alternatives that you could use um, and certainly we could um, provide more information on alternative choices but uh, the in-gas uh, sensor is uh, again um, the most um, highest performance at the lowest cost, let's put it like that. And then of course uh, extended swear is another terminology uh, referring to a camera that is going out to 2.5 microns. Why use swear cameras? Well, basically, um, because the uh, near and swear wavelengths um, are so similar to visible light, you essentially get a familiar image when you image in the swear. However, um, you're able to see beyond the visible, so you're able to do some really cool stuff uh, that you can't do um, with other types of technologies. And Basically, a large number of applications are difficult or not even possible um, yeah, unless you're using um, near and swear. So in the near and swear, for example, uh, water vapor fog in certain materials such as silicone and transparent. So for things like wafer inspection, uh, for uh, persistent surveillance and military applications, the um, near swear wavelength is certainly uh, quite interesting and growing in prop uh, popularity quite a bit. Um, why use it? Again, um, you generally have a very high sensitivity. Uh, you're able to see um, with the night glow or the night sky radiance. Uh, you can use both. Uh, you, you can use a camera for both day and night imaging. Um, you can do covert illumination. So uh, the iSafe laser is out at 1550 nanometers and you can really only pick that up if you're using a swear or um, operating in the swear, let's say it like that, because you could use other types of technologies, as I said, um, to go into that range, uh, but you certainly can't use visible cameras uh, to uh, hit the 1550 mark. Um, no cryogenic cooling is required. Sometimes thermoelectric cooling is required, though. Uh, typically, there's, a lot of the cameras are smaller size and lower power, and uh, you can match these cameras up to a lot of um, uh, lenses. Um, you can match them to lenses uh, using uh, generally a CRF mount. However, um, for the best performance, you really want to, you do want to invest in a good swear lens. 
and that's something our firm could uh, help help people with. Um, there are wide-ranging applications for near and sewer cameras. Um, semiconductor inspection, um, obviously because of this wavelength, very interesting to uh, detect uh, defects and things like wafers in, um, in solar cells and solar panels, um, fluorescence, um, and inspection of uh, circuit boards, electronic boards, uh, anti-counterfeiting. Uh, it's pretty amazing if you look at um, a dollar bill or a euro actually uh, with a swear camera. Uh, you can see things that you didn't realize are there. <laughs> um, so anti-counterfeiting, uh, process quality control, and uh, there's a lot of uh, applications just that are popping up here um, continuously uh, in this uh, in this wavelength and with swear cameras. So in a nutshell, you can do things with a swear camera that you cannot do with visible cameras or with your typical thermal long wave infrared camera. Now I'm going to give you an idea of the market prices. Uh, for swear cameras, and these are ballparks, uh, just so you get an idea of what the costs are, and these are based on the resolution of the camera. So a 320 by 256 um, array, uh, you can usually find them on the market between 15 and 26 thousand dollars for a camera. So you know, a lot of people who are really interested in this wavelength have no idea how much um, these products are. So this gives you a good idea that uh, you know they're not cheap. Um, they are going to be. Uh, typically at least 15k and uh, sometimes 26k or more and we'll get into some of the reasons why the prices are the way they are. Uh, the 640 by 512 is the very popular resolution these days also 640 by 480 um, it's about a $35,000 camera on average uh, you can find them less and, and, uh, and also there are more expensive ones um, the 3, 320 by 256 extended, not a lot of extended um, sensors available on the market that are in gas based uh, at this point, but they're starting to come on the market. And so these are expensive. Um, generally, these are uh, difficult sensors to produce, and these cameras are much more uh, labor intensive, engineering intensive to produce than visible cameras. So that's why they're expensive. So, you know, if you're out there looking for, and these are one off ballparks again uh, you know if you're out there looking for swear cameras you know that you know it's not a five thousand dollar product um, it's not a hundred thousand dollar product either but at least this gives you a range of magnitude um, certainly um, the prices are dependent on some very important things uh, specifications how many you buy and customer type we'll talk a little bit more about that and our website uh, ricecamera.com um, you can also find out more information about these products uh, what's affecting the price so what are the, some of the cost drivers of course an engineer and you listen to this specifications right it's all about the specs uh, so the performance of the products and there are some key very important things to look for when you're buying a swear camera um, this is a swear camera made simple presentation so we won't get into it on this one uh, but certainly we could help you um, understand what those uh, differences are uh, resolution of course as I mentioned whether the product is cooled or uncooled that's going to be <clears throat> um, affecting the price uh, the frame speed so frames per second the interface and what's meant by that of course is whether it is uh, digital or analog uh, or both um, you know some cameras have multiple interfaces uh, the software that's involved you know naturally if you're doing some um, some lab work and you you want to uh, use a lab view um, package or something like that you want something that matches up with it very easily and this you know, huge advantage to having that um, the spectral range it's operating in so again uh, where exactly in that uh, near square range is it operating and is it operating extended um, the processing so that means the image processing of the product um, so is the camera doing onboard image correction um, and is there any customization uh, so of course customization is always going to affect the price the quantity naturally if you're only going to buy one and that's all you're ever going to buy um, it's a more expensive product uh, than if you're buying um, dozens or hundreds or thousands uh, that's just common sense. Uh, the customer type. So what that means is, um, at our firm anyway, at Rice Camera Technologies, uh, what we do is, uh, you know, for certain type of customers, we'll certainly um, discount, and our prices are very fair. Uh, but if you're a government um, user, um, if you are an educational for educational research, um, or if you are um, uh, doing uh, things like uh, uh, you're an OEM basically, <laughs> so military or industrial OEM. So uh, those cover most of the categories, but uh, you know we'll tailor our price for you. So uh, uh, it's really depending on uh, what you're doing and those factors there. Important note on ITAR: no discussion of swear cameras can uh, <laughs> take place without talking about ITAR, and that's the International Traffic and Arms Regulation. 
um, and these ITAR, um, or these ingas-based swear cameras are subject to ITAR, and there are some pretty harsh penalties if you were to, um, uh, say, export the uh, swear cameras in your system outside the U.S. Um, so you can still uh, import the product, the um, swear cameras from other countries. Um, there's not that many countries that make these products, and it's very important that you work with a company uh, that has a lot of experience in ITAR. Um, our firm is uh, registered uh, with the Department of State, and we have experience um, in this area. Uh, we're not uh, a legal firm, obviously, but we do have experience there, with, and it's very important that um, you have uh, somebody you're working with that does. Uh, okay, so where to buy them? Um, again, uh, Rice Camera Technologies, we're in Billerick, Massachusetts. And we have a lot of different offerings, uh, different brands, different models. Uh, we can help you um, choose the right one depending on what you're trying to do and what your goals are. And we're trusted. I mean, we've been in this business for a while. Um, our CEO, Jay Rice, has been in this business for quite some time and has uh, um, uh, helped customers with many millions of dollars worth of cameras. And also, we're a company that uh, works with uh, government, um, the DOD, uh, with uh, some of the top um, industrial firms. So um, that's all, all great. We, we really appreciate uh, working with different types of companies and seeing what you're doing and um, seeing how we can help you. So by all means, um, let us know if you have questions. Here's our contact information. I'll make it available again at the very end. Um, so I just wanted to um, thank you very much for listening to this. And once again, if you do have questions, um, first of all, we do a lot of information on our website. On our website, you can register for products. You can download specs. Um, we have different models. Uh, we have uh, the products separated by wavelength. So if you go to our website, you can see the products um, and there are military and industrial products. Um, and the, most of the industrial products are suitable for military and most of the military products are COTS, but we do have um, some different choices. Uh, they're more targeted towards those applications specifically. And you know, naturally just give us an email um, or just send us an email, I should say, um, if you have questions, if you'd like some data sheets, if you'd like some manuals, if you'd like to know pricing. And we'll be happy to help you out. So thank you very much and have a great day.